Everybody loves Chinese takeout, right? Well, maybe. I mean, the pictures on these menus make the dishes look fantastic. But most of the time I find myself feeling unsatisfied. It's either too salty or too bland, and half the time I find myself paying for my transgressions later on in the evening. Am I really gonna make a poop joke before I show people how to cook food? 38 years old making poop jokes. Yeah, we're gonna make a poop joke. Who does number two work for? One of those favorite Chinese dishes is Mongolian beef, a staple of American Chinese restaurants. Now, despite its name, it has absolutely nothing to do with Mongolian cuisine. And since it isn't traditional, what better person than a Polak from the Midwest to show you how to make it? And since we don't hurt cows on our videos, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a Mongolian venison dish that'll have you throwing out the 30 takeout menus that you have posted on your refrigerator and maybe even save you a little bit of money on toilet paper. Another poop joke? I need some new material. It's also a good idea to prepare everything in advance to cooking because things can happen pretty quickly with the stir-fry process at the end of this recipe. Start by smashing and finely chopping four cloves of garlic. One tablespoon finely chopped ginger. Two to three green onions. And save one or two for the garnish at the end. You'll also need some vegetable oil. One half cup brown sugar. One quarter cup hoisin sauce. One quarter cup soy sauce. One quarter cup water quarter cup of cornstarch, a splash of rice wine vinegar, two teaspoons gochujang, which is a Korean chili paste. You could also use gochugaru, which is a Korean chili powder, but this stuff is easier to find, and some salt and pepper. And now it's time for the meat. Always slap your meat. I don't know why the hell they slap the meat all the time in these videos. It's kind of weird. Traditionally, this is done with flank steak off beef, but because we always use wild game on this channel, we're gonna be using venison. And yes, you could probably use a backstrap, but I wouldn't recommend it. There's so many better recipes for a backstrap that you just don't have to do it. Today, we are using part of the bottom round as well as the eye of round. You want to start by trimming any silver skin, fat, and sinew until you have slabs of beautiful, lean meat. Chunk out the meat in large strips, cutting with the grain. Then cross cut against the grain just under half an inch. Let's call it 3 eighths. Now take the meat, throw it in a Ziploc bag, toss in the cornstarch, some salt and pepper, and shake the hell out of it until coated. Now you can use any old frying pan for this as long as it's large enough, but I really suggest getting a wok. It's gonna help with the stir fry process towards the end, and it's gonna make sure you don't look like Freddy Krueger from the oil burns that you have from frying up the venison. If food don't kill you, the service will. <clears throat> the wok I'm using today is stick resistant, but if you're using cast iron or steel, you want to season the wok by heating up oil in high heat, swirling occasionally. After three minutes or so, discard the oil, wipe it out with a paper towel, and your wok is now seasoned to avoid sticky, icky meat when cooking. Now add another three tablespoons of oil and heat it up over medium high heat. We're gonna be shallow frying these things in small groups so you don't overcrowd the pan and boil the hell out of your meat. 
You also don't want to cook it all the way through. A little bit of pink in the middle is fine because we're going to finish it off in the sauce at the end. Take your pieces of coated meat and gently drop them into the wok. Fry until you get a golden crust, roughly two minutes. Now flip and repeat. Remove onto a plate with paper towel or wire rack to drip off the excess oil. Now as your meat is frying, get yourself a pot of water, boil it up, and make some rice or noodles. Then continue the process with the remainder of the meat. Once you're done frying the entire batch, set the meat aside and now it's time to make the sauce. Start the sauce by adding two to three tablespoons of oil and tossing in the chopped green onion. Sear and toss for one to two minutes. Then stir fry in the tablespoon of chopped ginger and gochujang. For about a minute to get what they call wake. Add in the half cup brown sugar and stir fry that in. Then add in the quarter cup soy sauce, half cup water, and quarter cup hoisin sauce, and a splash of rice wine vinegar. Stir fry three to four minutes until the sauce begins to thicken or until it starts to stick to your spatula. It will become almost glazed in appearance. Then stir fry in your venison. That local China buffet ain't got nothing on this. Now plate it up with some noodles or rice and a splash of those chopped green onions on it to make it look all fancy pants. Time for the taste test. It looks amazing. So here we go. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's so good. Bam! Well, the point is not to disguise venison. But this dish kind of complements the venison. In fact, the flavors in it, I think, go better with venison than it does beef. So this is just another way that you can cook venison. Maybe sometimes people talk about wild game being boring. You can only cook it one way or it's gonna get gamey. I promise you there are so many ways to cook wild game and this is just one of the recipes. So I'm gonna finish this up. I hope you try it. If you like it, comment on the video. If you tried something different, let me know what you did differently. If you really like it, subscribe.